Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux. Today we're going to take a look at BPYTOP. So, uh, one of the more recent uh, videos in this series was a list of my top 5 favorite Linux apps, and in that list I was talking about uh, this app right here, BPYTOP. This is a system management app, it's very similar to stuff like HTOP and GoTOP and that kind of thing. It monitors your CPU usage, it can monitor memory usage, network usage, and basically just display processes and allow you to kind of easily kill them if you're having an issue with one process or another. And it occurred to me when I was recording this video that I actually had never made a video about the BPY top, which seems kind of absurd. There should definitely be a video about this particular program. So let's take a look at it. When we're talking about uh, BPY top, it is a relatively new app, but it's actually uh, popped up in most of the repositories by now. If you're using Ubuntu, you can install it with sudo apt install BPY top. And on Arch Linux, I believe it's not actually in Pac-Man yet, but oh, it is actually, yeah. So it's just uh, in Pac-Man BPY top. So you could do sudo Pac-Man dash S and install BPY top. This is a system management app that is built on Python. Uh, and, uh, you know, Python, like any other programming language, just has its critics, has its people that uh, really like it. Uh, what I can tell you is that in terms of system resources, it runs pretty lightweight. I have never had any issues with it, you know, seeming to take up more resources than it should or anything like that. Never had really an issue with it uh, in terms of responsiveness or, or being slow or anything else. It, it works as well as you would expect it to. And that's it. So by default, uh, BPY top looks a little bit bit something like this. We have a uh, CPU grid up here that's just tracking our CPU. It can tell you the temperature of the CPU in Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius. It will uh, break down your CPU down to each thread. So you can see all 12 of my threads here being shown. And we've got a nice little graph here over time to make sort of tracking your CPU usage over time easier. We've also got network in and out stats, upload and download. That can be handy for some things. And we've also got memory usage and a process filter. I typically actually simplify it quite a bit and that's easy to do in BPY top. One of the things that I mentioned when I was talking about BPY top before is that it does sort of what I think more apps should do and it does have a actual config file if we were to cd into dot config and look into the BPY top folder there is a BPY top config. If we go into that BPY top config, you can see this is a pretty normal config. It's it's not, you know, written in any sort of difficult language to understand. It's very easy to come in here and change things up, you know, change the color scheme to something else, you know, change what stats it's showing. If I look for the temperature, it's very easy to change from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I can change the clock, all that sort of thing. All of this can be done from a text file that is a config file. And that's not a horrible way to config files, but of course the best advantage advantage of this is one, backing it up and tracking it on multiple systems. So in my case, all of my config files are Git controlled and I just pulled them down on every system I want to use them on and all my apps when I open them up have the configs that I'm used to using. That's where something like this comes really in handy. And also if you know you see somebody else's config that you like online, you can literally just copy and paste in their config or download a config file and drop it in your config folder, whatever you want to do. It's nice to have a config file. But what BPY top also does is sort of gives you the best of both worlds. Especially if you're new to using an app, using an actual config file can be a little funky. So if you hit escape, you get an option screen and you can come in here and do all the things you would want to do to configure app. You can change through some color schemes. If you want it to not have a transparent background, if you're using PyCom or something like that, that's easy to do. And you can also get pretty granular control over how the app actual functions. You know, So for example, to configure it the way that I want, I just remove this network box and I remove the memory box. And all of a sudden, now it's a much simpler app. It's just showing my CPU usage and the actual processes that are using that CPU usage. All I really want it to do is my monitor CPU usage. That's a bit of a weird niche use case, but I'm not super concerned about network usage and I've got more than enough memory to the point that memory should never really be an issue on my system. So this is all I really need this app to do and it's easy to configure it to do just that. But there's also other things here that they didn't really need to add, but they did. If you're on a laptop, it can actually show you the battery usage. That's kind of interesting. One of my favorite features, it has a clock up here if we take a look right here dead in the center. And the way that this clock works is exactly the same way that 
that like the date command works on Linux or the way that things work in Keyboard Maestro or Auto Hotkey, a, a snippet type app that people like to use. It's there's, you know, if we were to open up the man page for date, there's these sort of formatting flags that you can use to create a sort of modular date control. And so it's super easy if you're familiar with this kind of app the way that I am because I've used it in stuff like Polybar and stuff like snippet apps, that kind of thing. It's very easy to come into the BPY top config and just type in exactly what flags you want to use. It even gives you a few examples down here in the config settings to kind of help you get on your way to configure the clock however you want. Uh, you can also change the update time if you wanted to as low as 100 milliseconds so that it just updates much more quickly. I don't know why anyone would need that up to date data, but it's there if you want it. I'm always a fan of apps that give you more customization options, even if you won't necessarily use them rather than less customization options. And I think BPY top falls into this category. More important than the customization is this does actually work as just a good system monitoring app. One of the other really nice things about BPY top is it works pretty well with mouse support. So you can see here, like, uh, let me give you an example here up at the top. There's actually plus and minus signs for the update time. So I could come in here and quickly sort of turn the update time down a lot all the way up to 100 milliseconds. If I, you know, it was just in a scenario where I really just needed super up to date information for some reason. Also, you know, let's say you've got a process that's taking up a bunch of usage. Let's say PyCom. Oh, all of a sudden, oh my God, this is using 1.2% of my CPU. What the hell? I can come in here and I can double click on it, get some more info about it, break it down. What, what kind of memory is it using? What all that kind of stuff. And if I want to kill it really quickly, I can just click terminate and I lose transparency and everything, but pretty easy to turn that back on. No biggie. Oh, I can even scroll through the processes with my mouse wheel if I want to. And that's great because I think there aren't a ton of really, really great system monitoring apps available, you know, as a sort of GUI app. I think in terms of system monitoring apps, the best ones out there are terminal based stuff like HTOP, TOP, GoTOP, BPY TOP, of course, all that kind of stuff. So this is cool that it can sort of be used like a GUI app if you just really want to. But of course, you don't have to do that. I can come through and I can actually use Vim keys to navigate through the processes. That's nice. Uh, you can also use arrow keys. I can scroll through the list and oh, hey, do I want to kill PyCom again? Hit T, it's dead. It can do some more advanced stuff. I can hit F if I want to and search for a particular program if I want to. Uh, you know, let's say, hey, I need to find XORG. Hey, there we go, we got XORG. Oh, I need to find, uh, I don't know, what's something. Let's see, PPY top, Python 3. This is what that's using. I can see exactly how much CPU usage this is using. In this case, it's 0.1% and 41 megabytes of memory. So, I mean, I guess that would be a problem if you're running on like a DOS machine, but it's certainly not a problem on most modern computers. Uh, we can hit R to reverse the process tree if we want to. We can hit E to show it as more of a literal process tree so I can see the things that are launched by system D, that type of thing. And that's kind of handy every once in a while. You know, I can come in here and see, oh, okay, we got a Alacrity running. What's Alacrity running? Well, it's running Z. It's also running Polybar. It's running SnapD, Transmission, and Dropbox. That's cool. The CPU tree is handy in some cases. It's not on by default, but that's something you can do. That's pretty cool. I don't know how much there is to say about this. It's a system processing app. I think it's a good idea to have one, especially if you're on a lower end system. It's, it's kind of good to be able to monitor your system resources if there are some things that occasionally will take up more resources than you want them to. But even if you're on a modern system that's got, you know, more than enough power for things that you do, sometimes it can be good to kind of see what's going on. Even if it's not the kind of thing that you want to keep open on a second monitor all the time or anything like that, it's good to have that kind of app because apps do weird things sometimes and more times than they should, buggy pieces of software get pushed out. And it's just, it's handy to have a way to quickly see what's hitting your CPU hardest. It's a good app to have. This is my recommendation, but find one that you like and use it. Uh, if you are interested, uh, my config is available. If you go to github.com slash Mac slash dot, uh, all my dot files are always linked below all of my videos. So feel free to check that out if you want. If you ever want to see any of the configs for my apps, you can just click right here in this config folder and BPY top is actively tracked in my dot file. So you can just copy my config or download it or you want if you want this exact same config for whatever reason, it's available. But that is going to be it for this particular video. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to check back tomorrow for more videos and uh, I'll see you in the next one.